Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text I want to spend some time on, as I mentioned earlier, is from the Gospel lesson from John 15th chapter, which begins at verse 1. I'll read just a small portion. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. This is our text. It's about that time of year, maybe. How many of you have a set of these? Yeah, raise your hand. I was like, raise it high. Yeah, a lot of pruners out there, right? You use these, almost as the text describes, to prune out the dead wood, which is prohibiting the tree or bush from getting the light it needs and other extra foliage that is sapping the tree of its energy. Some of you know that I, next door, I have an apple tree on my property from which I enjoy making apple desserts. I'm kind of proud of that tree. Some time ago, I asked our resident apple professional, Gordon Hahn, who works for a local orchard about pruning it. He gave me some sage advice. He said this, when you prune an apple tree, You should cut enough out so that when you're done, you can throw a baby through it. <laughs> can you picture a younger Gordon with his little kids? <laughs> Mark, Julie, come quickly, I need your help. Excellent. We're going to have to do a little more pruning, okay? I'll be back in a minute. He could have said a beach ball. Pruning. In our text for today, Jesus says that the Father is the master gardener. He prunes the tree so that it will be even more fruitful, so that it will be more connected to its source of strength. That is, he wants to help you and me be rid of those things in our lives that are holding us back from producing the kind of bountiful fruit that the Father wants from us. He wants to trim away, to prune the tree of our spiritual life so that it is perfectly poised to produce a harvest of good things. What's the harvest, you say? What's he talking about? Galatians 5 makes quite clear what the fruit of the Spirit is. It says the fruit of the Spirit is, and I'm sure you've heard this passage many times, maybe you could even say it with me if you can do. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the kind of qualities that God yearns for his people to be producing. So here's the question for today. What kinds of things hold us back from this spirit fruit that we should be producing? What qualities and struggles do we need our God to come and prune away for us so that we become more fruitful? Let's think a little bit about what they might be. I'm going to start with one you see a lot. Anger. Can you see how anger prohibits love? Think about it. All it takes is just a little dose of bitterness, and all of a sudden we can find ourselves resentful, jealous, erecting walls between ourselves and others. You've seen it, no doubt. Two friends, once bosom buddies, all of a sudden, no longer talking and backbiting and, talk and, and saying nasty things behind each other's backs. The Capulets and the Montagues, 
the Hatfields and McCoys. I saw it once some two brothers who at one time were best friends at my last church, always sitting together, doing work projects together. And then an inheritance argument separated them, and they refused to speak to each other for years. Anger embraced is a cancer that will wither the plant right up. No fruit from that. But that's not the only thing. How about greed? Sometimes we want things so badly that we are ready to sacrifice other, more important things to get them. And so in pursuit of that great something out there, we may give up time with our family, maybe a little bit of our integrity, maybe be just a little bit less kind, generous, or patient. We lose the joy, that fruit of the Spirit, because we're never fully satisfied. Think of Judas, who I'm sure had plenty of excuses why he would betray his good friend and master Jesus. But in the end, the scriptures leave us with the gnawing feeling that it is mostly about his own yearning for profit, to gain for himself what he did not earn or deserve. Greed stops the fruit. Then there's the desires of the flesh. Maybe it's a craving for a person, someone different than your husband or wife, who seems just right for you, perfect, and love it. Or maybe it's a craving for the pleasure that comes from the, the rush of gambling, or drugs, or gaming, or alcohol, or some other addiction. Our body has desires, many of which are not so godly. And yet so often our desire to serve our God, to be faithful to Him, is trumped by our desire to serve ourselves. Think King David, for instance, whose yearning for the woman on the roof next door led him down a roller coaster ride of unhappiness and pain. Maybe it's pride. You know pride. The stubbornness that surrounds the way we think things should be done. The fact that we want things our own way. Think here of the Pharisees and teachers of the law who were so dead on maintaining their positions of authority and the status quo that brought them whatever it did, that they were ready to sacrifice the Lord's life on an evil cross just to maintain it. Or maybe it's the way we speak. You know, the joy we get from being able to share the latest tidbit or perhaps criticism about someone we don't care for, or to talk about others behind their backs. Maybe it's the way we treat our parents or our kids. Maybe it's the jealousy we have over someone's greater success. Or maybe it's our apathy toward things spiritual. Or maybe the tempter has gotten us to lose heart and hope, and we are tangled up in a knot of despair and depression over the way things are. Maybe he's overwhelmed us with seemingly insurmountable difficulties, and we can see no way of escape. You know this dead wood. You have this dead wood in some area of your life. And it is often diverting your connection to him who is the vine, sapping you of strength and faith and confidence that should be yours as a child of God, but leaving you instead with doubts and fears and frustrations. You and I, my friends, we need pruning every single day. Thanks be to our God that he is ready, willing, and able to give us the help we need. And while we might be looking for something extraordinary and glamorous, this help more often comes to us in a simple fashion. 
Not usually thunderclaps and lightning bolts that set us dramatically back on track, not so much dreams and visions. It comes to us as the Holy Spirit uses the tools that he promises to employ all the time. Chief among them, this. As we immerse ourselves in the stories of God's mercy and grace, as we see how God has worked in the lives of sinners like us, and most especially as we are confronted with the Savior who himself was cut off from the land of the living and from the mercy of our Father so that he could bring forgiveness of sins and victory over the evil one to us, our heart is moved by these words to seek his ways and not our own. Consider the murderous New Testament enemy of the church, Saul of Tarsus. There he was, doing everything in his power to topple the Christian movement, gathering God's people from all over the country. He submitted them to torture and persecution in an attempt to get them to turn away from Jesus, even as ISIS is doing today. Talk about Deadwood. His whole tree was almost fully comprised of branches that led him astray. But the word of the Lord came to him. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And it isn't long before a prophet named Ananias is standing before the man, sharing God's word in its deeper fashion, and literally, call it pruning if you like, scales fall off of Saul's eyes so that he can see the error of his ways. Next thing you know, he's the amazing apostle Paul who travels all over the world, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ despite threats and trials and persecution. That's what the Word does for us too, friends. It helps us see Jesus for who he really is, and knowing the real Jesus changes us inside. As the book of Hebrews says to us, the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. A powerful tool for pruning. But the Spirit has other tools too. One over there, where you were made a child of God, or if you don't like it. And up there, where you gather with fellow believers, even today, to receive Christ's real body and blood. These two gifts are intended to personally embrace you in the touch of the King of Kings. In baptism, God touched you with the finger of his love as the water put away your old self and a new person was born. Since the day of your baptism, you are not alone anymore. You have become the temple of the Holy Spirit, and he lives within you to help you connect to the vine of Christ every day. The old sinful nature is drowned in the waters of baptism so that the new person in Christ can come forth and arise and produce that fruit that we spoke of. Similarly, as you approach the table of Christ, he comes to you with his own true body and blood to strengthen and support you. He declares to you personally, in no uncertain terms, that you are precious to him, that he will have your back as you go out to face the world's challenges, Satan's temptations, and the own sinful desires that you have in your own flesh. Beyond that, of course, God has also given you the support of his church. This group of believers is here to help carry your burdens and to encourage and support you. That's why we gather here every week. We wanted to just watch a sermon we could turn on the internet. We're here to hear God's word and to strengthen and support one another. Prune. May God continue to do his work of keeping us strong and steadfast. May he prune away all those things that sap us of the energy that is found in the true vine, Jesus Christ. And may he finally flood us with the spirit of power so that we go forth with confidence and the joy of Christ Jesus. When the baby flies through the tree, things go really well.
and the tree produces. May God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son.